Mohamed I. Tumain in charge. Tiago Macedo, Ashley Williams. Macedo originally from Brazil, currently calling San Antonio, Texas his home. Began jiu-jitsu as well, actually, with his brother at just seven years old. Loves the challenges, loves the super fights, was game to come in. Ashley Williams was training for a very different fight, but none of that will matter. He said at the end of the day, this belt will be mine. Now, Macedo, mainly in the gi, so it'll be interested to see if his no-gi game is up to specification. He trains hard all year round, though, so he believes even though he accepted this championship fight on one-week notice, he stays ready. So Williams off his back, Macedo on top. One of the most active guys, as far as my numbers go, on this uh, card. 13 fights in 2022, nine wins. And again, you watch his gi game. He's just got incredible grips and awareness and use of leverage. But uh, Ashley Williams hunting for the back early. Can't quite convert. Williams has some great leg locks ex expertise here, but he's got to try and expose the leg, pummel the legs on the inside, control the limb, and look for that dominant position. Williams now looking to invert through. Got to try and clear the body, though, and attack the leg. Second, he can start to clasp one limb, Chris. He's going to have uh, more of a, an affordance to finish with the leg lock. Macedo just collapsing his weight a moment ago, then looking for the cartwheel pass. I mean, again, he's just uh, got such a beautiful use of leverage in the way you see him move on the mat. Macedo always looking for control, side control, mount control, back, and then the finishes. That's my style, he said. And that is how I'm going to win this fight. Worked an awful lot in recent training on passing the guard. Actually, he briefly tasted the uh, the dart attempt there as they went off the mat. Defends the single leg beautifully now. Flying triangle attempt. If he can reach up and grab the shin, Chris, he can lock this one in. Ashley Williams looking to secure that. Will he be able to get the figure four? It looks like he's got it here, oh, Dean. Oh, he's got the angle. He's underhooking the leg as well. If he can try and sweep Macedo down to the ground, that's going to afford him the position. He could also switch to the armbar, but I don't think he's going to want to open those legs for fear of the escape from Macedo. Dangerous times for Tiago Macedo. This championship bid could be over early. This is what he wants. He wants the angle, the top position. He's rolling through as they go out of bounds. Now wow. They, they're going to have to be started in that same position, Chris. He looked wobbly there. Yeah, it looked tight. Very, very tight. In particular, when Williams got that top position, got the sweep, gained him some more leverage. He wasn't having to hold himself up. Yeah, they're going to have to set this in the, in the full try. And at what degree do you give Macedo the angle, the space? Like, he's, he's trying <laughs> to come to the other side. That's his, one, of, one of his escapes. But Williams has got to try and invert underneath that leg. And it's what he had before they went out of bounds. You know, he had the dominant position. He's going to try and level the arm through here, Chris. Get the sweep. Top position now, he's going to roll through. But he's got to try and unhook the left leg there of Macedo to, to get a better angle, again, looking in the ear of his opponent. And Ashley Williams is oh so close to the triangle finish after the reset. Tiago Macedo is trying to find some breathing room, but this looks awfully tight. Williams now working off of his back here. Doing a good job of trying to push the arm through. But he's got to get the angle there off to his right side. You can see there he's trying to dive underneath the body of Macedo. And to, to Macedo's credit, he's going to that left side very heavily. He's trying to create some space and disallow Williams for gaining the angle that he needs. So Williams now is going to try and work this position from a different angle. He can also attack the armbar and uh, the Americana from this position. Often when you go for the armbar on the Americana, it gives the opportunity to retighten the triangle, look for the choke. There's the armbar attempt. Oh, beautiful work from Macedo, using that opportunity to escape. Now looking to pass the guard. And Macedo out of the triangle. Williams saw this as a big fight for him, his goals, the ADCC and the long run. But you know what? He wanted exciting fights and he wanted a test. He's got it. Macedo is hanging. Yeah, he did a great job of making the gap between his shoulder and his neck. 
big. You know, he went to that left side, tried to flare his arms out. And I love the way he sensed the ample time to escape. Tiago Macedo, a Pan Am's champ, Abu Dhabi Grand Slam champ. He's got a whole host of accolades. Ashley Williams was very candid that there was no underestimation about a short notice opponent swap. And it's been a resilient performance from Tiago Macedo, but I tell you what, a brilliant performance from Ashley. Williams did a gorgeous job locking up that flying triangle, and uh, I think it's paid dividends. Yeah, he's initiating the attacks a little bit more, and he's pulling the trigger and holding the trigger down, looking for a quick, fast submission. And he had success with the explosive jumps, you know, the, the jump to the triangle. You know, if he can get to the top position, can he implement that with the guard passes to try and get a better position and then look for the submission? He's not going to be able to do that off of his back, of, you know, with his butt on the ground. He needs to get the feet underneath him, get the knees underneath him to be able to propel himself forward. Look to chase the legs again. Macedo does a great job of just evading capture. He retrieves his legs and reverses out of that position, then immediately re-engages. Now, at what point do you chase, Chris? Do you, you know, do you burn the gas tank if this goes to the points round? It's, it's one of those things where, you know, the high-level guys, they have to create these openings but while stay safe away from the leg locks and prevent their opponent from advancing. It's a, it's a precarious uh, valley to travel down, you know? It's a dangerous one. That's why we see sometimes that, they, you know, they, they consolidate their techniques. They, it looks like they're waiting, but they're, wait, they're trying to gain the opportunity. Uh, now, this is what we, what we wanted to see from Williams. In the top position, driving the knee forward, using some of that explosive movement to get past the guard. Yeah, I was going to say, at what point do you push the pace? Because on one hand, you know, we've seen the advantageous position that Williams was able to secure with the triangle, but the resilience from Macedo must kind of bring you into the thought process of maybe I do have to take this guy into points, or maybe I do have to try to do some things a little bit differently here. It's always intriguing to me to see the decision-making on the fly as a strategy develops, so the tactics kind of come out under the table. Sato might be looking to attack that left leg. He's going to get some distance between him and his opponent. At this point in time, Williams did a great job of using the hips heavy, stuffing the guard of Macedo. Well, both men looking to control posture here. Ashley Williams with forward pressure. Macedo looking to maybe use his legs, but Williams is just flattening them down and trying to really assert his dominance here. Over the midway point of regulation time, the only way to win is submission. And right now, it looks Ooh. like Williams might be throwing up the legs. He's going to try and punch that uh, left arm through of Macedo. Look for him to get the 100% grip and yank that arm forward. Then the uh, triangle is available to him. He could circle around for the arm bar as well and also attack the leg. An excellent decision as far as the grips go. Has he got an omoplata here potentially? Ashley Williams is just linking it all together Oh, he's here. got a variation of the Kimura here. He's using the leg and the angular motion with the arm, uses that to expose the back as they go off the mat. That was absolutely gorgeous. He had about four or five different options there, didn't he? Yeah, he did a great job of firing round initially with the triangle, then to the arm bar. Yeah, it's, I've seen that on YouTube. It was called a Tarika Plata. Tarika Plata. I've seen it, I've seen it. I've seen somebody demonstrate that. I couldn't tell you who it was, but I did see that on YouTube. Yeah, there was another one, uh, SBG guy, Hammond, Hammond Platter. The, you know, variations of the, uh, the uh, angular motion on the shoulder. Lee Hammond was the guy from SBG, he's a Hammond Platter. Yeah, and again, like testing these uh, new variations in the highest level is, is something of a treat for us. And to test it on the, on the world stage as well determines whether those skills stay in jiu-jitsu or they leave. Well, Ashley Williams now searching for the neck of Tiago Macedo, had talked an awful lot 
about being part of an active competition team and working on his wrestling and his physicality in this fight. He said, look, it's all about the road to the ADCC, and I want to go out there and show why I'm a dominant grappler. Oh, and right Williams. now... He's got a dangerous rear naked choke, Chris. He's going for it, Dean. I was going to say, he's got that potential choke from the back control here. Probably wants to lock up the legs and get the body triangle. He's got the hooks in deep here. He's going to try and fire the legs back, put some pressure through the, the back here and flatten out Sado. Sado responds with a little bit of angular motion there to turn onto his side to prevent the flatten out. And he also disallows the angle that Williams needs to get an effective squeeze. Well, Tiago Macedo talked about using his technique to establish positions. And I tell you what, it's been fairly dominant for Ashley Williams so far in being able to control these positions. Some good submission attempts. Get a good start here with the body triangle. Williams needs to be a little bit more square on the hips to gain uh, optimum pressure through the hips there to flatten his opponent out. It's going to opt to roll him, punching the arm in the dead space as well. A lot of pressure through the back here, Macedo. He's got to try and roll uh, to face the sky and then look to uh, lever himself towards the lock of his opponent, in this case, on the uh, the left side of Williams, and uh, force a little bit of directional force through the ankle and then try and turn into his opponent. Would that be, in this case, rolling to the right to keep the lock on the top side? Yeah, he basically just wants to, either side would do. He wants to be facing the sky, basically, and then uh, look to, uh, I mean, this now, the body lock's uh, a little bit off, you know, he's almost pulled a guard, so Mercedes can turn and give up the mount. It's, it's sometimes a, a better option than having your back taken, but it's hard to turn, especially if the guy's got a good squeeze on. And there's not much sweat in play here, given the rash guard and the, uh, the, 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 uh, the tight shorts. You know, there's not a lot of skin on skin contact. So it makes it a little bit more harder for Mercedes to turn. Ashley Williams again with the back. Macedo fighting the over under. See, now look, there's some pressure through the ankle. You can see it from our vantage point, not on the camera angle. Macedo sat back to the side of the lock. He's hooked the leg and he's forcing his hips up to put pressure on that ankle, hoping that Williams would open that up and he can start to look to uh, get rid of the hooks and turn into him. To force the release, yes? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Almost like a footlock. But Williams is doing the correct thing. He's following round, getting topside, so it alleviates the pressure on the ankle and he's hunting for the uh, rear naked choke. Ashley Williams. Just about 30 seconds on the clock here is fishing for the RNC. Macedo has been on defense the majority of these 12 minutes. I think he's trying to conserve energy here, Chris. If he explodes and turns and twists, sometimes you can cause a little bit of rib injuries and expend uh, un unnecessary uh, energy. You know, just come up to the last 15 seconds here. He's playing it safe. He's defending the neck. You know, there's no points as of yet. So he's playing the smart game. And just seconds remain. Between Ashley Williams and Tiago Macedo, there is a belt on the line here, an inaugural belt at Raw Grappling Championship 2. We will go the distance in regulation time. 12 minutes on regulation Two minutes on the clock concluded. momentarily. Two minutes on the side and this is for Two all the marbles, Dean. Yeah, this is where it changes. This is where who's more explosive, who gets that definitive takedown, who gets that guard pass. You know, we're going to see the points come before the submissions in this instance. All right, points are in play. There's a low ankle there. Going to turn it to a body lock, looking to step through. And Macedo aggressively looking for a potential takedown. Positions must be established for at least three seconds. And you must be out of danger of submission for those points to be awarded. And we'll talk you through it as it happens. And the next 90 seconds or so could potentially decide the winner of the belts. This is the inaugural 70 kilogram title fights. Williams looking for 
at that angle here. Circling through here could potentially expose the back. Triangles as well. Arm bars are available. Forward pressure here from Macedo. Williams did a good job of preventing the guard pass. And they've come straight into the commentary position. Is he going to get the, uh, the points for the takedown? That'd be a good question. I'm not sure whether it was convincingly established enough. Macedo wants to stand up. Double guard pull. Muhammad Aitoumain overseeing things under 60 seconds to go. It's a struggle for position. Largely for leverage underneath or uh, to pummel your leg on the inside to expose the leg lock. There's a sweep attempt from Williams. Can he get to the top position and secure it? Ash looking to get some distance. Sedona looking to get to the top position. Ash looking for the takedown. Got to roll through and try and evade capture here for the Anaconda. Oh, Mercedo has the lock on. It doesn't look It's on the face clean. a little bit, though, Chris. You can see here from our vantage point, it's on the side of the jaw of Williams, so it's not actually uh, constricting the, uh, the cartwheel arteries in the neck of Williams. Wow. An unbelievable last-minute assault there from Diago Macedo going in search of the Anaconda. It wasn't right. Certainly a commendable last-minute attack. Both guys looking for the takedown or the sweep. It could have all come down to two points, but it's gonna have to come down to the referee's decision. They look confident in the Welsh corner. And we have our Raw Grappling Championship CEO to the mats, please, to present the belt. And, and there you have it. We have the belt goes to that man, Ashley Williams. With your winner. And the the 29-year-old from Swansea and Wales. Championship winner, it's Ashley Williams. Relishes the challenge, sees the beautiful growth and of the sport he loves and has dedicated his entire life to. Macedo. And a crowning moment getting the inaugural title belt here in London. Dean doesn't get better. Again, yeah, he's the ultimate competitor, always looking to improve his skill set in every match. And now he goes home with the gold. What a statement to make. Ashley Williams. Now let's take a look at some of the action. This is how it went down. We knew Tiago Macedo was no mug coming into this. That flying triangle, though, a thing of beauty. Yeah, that looks super tight. And the key here was when he was able to drag Macedo down to the ground and manipulate and sweep into the top position. But a credit to Macedo not tapping. He did a good job of using an angle to make a, a larger space. You can see there from the, our camera angle, Macedo's more to the left, trying to make that space between his shoulder and his neck large. And then a reversal of positions. We had the reset as they went off the mats. And there, the uh, unorthodox maneuvers. Yeah, the variation of the shoulder lock there. Between Alma Platter and uh, Kimura, and various athletes have coined it. <laughs> but it's definitely a shoulder lock. And here was the anaconda. From this vantage point, you can't see that it's uh, across the jaw, actually, of Williams. It wasn't fully the clasping across his neck. And uh, Williams also did a good job of staying flat-backed and looking to the sky to prevent the angle that Sato needed. And that was the action as we saw it. We're going to grab the champ here. We're going to sit him down and have a quick little chat. Give us a moment. Matt side here along the champ, Ashley Williams. Congratulations on your performance, sir. Give us your thoughts on that fight. Uh, I, gotta be honest, I, saw, uh, I 
could have put him away and I should have. I was very disappointed with the triangle um, twice, you know. Uh, my game plan was to get to his legs. He did really good to steer clear of that. So yep. I thought fair play to him. I knew he was going to be a game opponent knowing the score. So just getting up on him would have been difficult. Um, but all due respect, him in a week notice, probably made his gi. And, um, you know, like, gave me a very, very good match. So I was happy with it. Yeah, he was a credible opponent. We talked about that yesterday. We knew he was coming in, not to be underestimated. Talk me through the Tarek Oplata. Oh, yeah, of course, I hit the Tarek Oplata halfway through. Um, I've been using it loads, and I catch it all the time from, like, that triangle shoulder clamp. And I was like, man, this is on, you know? And then we're going to go out of bounds again, and he was going to reset, and I thought, he's going to do me over the reset for sure. I'm going to get, like, caught out. So I opted to go for the back, and that obviously gave me the back then after. So I thought decision making wise, it made sense, you know. But um, I did feel really good. Yeah. I know how much the sport means to you. I know about the scene in Wales. Your team, you had your twin there in the corner. Uh, yeah. What does this victory mean for you in the long run? Uh, what's next? So, dry uh, my team were everything to me. You know, like uh, I love my coaches, love my teammates, and uh, I really couldn't do what I do without them. You know, the reason I perform how I do is because I get a spot with them every day. Uh, they give me the toughest rounds um, they can. And uh, it preps me for this. Realistically, everything about what I'm doing right now is leading to ADCC. Um, obviously, in ADCC, I'm going to be considered by far, uh, you know, like absolutely down in the bottom of the pool for who can perform. But I'm going to win, you know, I'm not going to take the numbers. And uh, I've, lost, I've watched the guys, I've sparred against, competed against a few of them. And I just don't think they should underestimate, you know, for sure not. Yep. Now, Dean, you and I were really impressed with that fight. It was a technical fight. Tiago Macedo put on a brilliant performance. Ashley Williams, we, I mean, we saw that triangle. We thought that might be the beginning of the end. What were your reflections and what have you got to say to Amir? 